The other day, I was making bourbon brown butter Rice Krispie treats, muttering under my breath about the guy who griped at my bourbon steak video, asserting that there's no way I actually cook with that stuff, when I thought, even though it isn't exactly groundbreaking, this recipe might make for a good video. Everyone already knows how to make the classic Rice Krispie treats. The recipe is printed on the cereal box and on the bag of mini marshmallows. But this grown-up version only takes a few small modifications. First, when you melt that half stick of butter in a pot over medium heat, add two tablespoons of non-fat dry milk powder to it. This is the only way that I ever brown butter, and it has been for years. Powdered milk is made out of milk solids, and milk solids are the part of brown butter that gets brown. So by adding more solids, you get more of that toasty flavor. Once the butter is browned, add a two ounce shot of bourbon and a 10 ounce bag of mini marshmallows. Mix everything quickly so it doesn't scorch. And when the marshmallows have melted down, cut the heat and add six cups of puffed rice cereal. Mix everything together and then pour said mixture into a buttered eight inch dish. This stuff is incredibly sticky, so you can use your butter's wrapping paper to press it down evenly. This needs at least half an hour to cool off and solidify, but right now, while it's still warm, I like to shower it with several heavy pinches of flaky Malden salt. By adding just one extra step and three extra ingredients to a classic recipe, you'll impart enough nutty browned butter and warm bourbon flavors to have people clamoring just to figure out what makes these taste so refined. I remember my mother preparing salted brown butter bourbon Rice Krispie treats a long time ago, and I love this idea of making a ubiquitous recipe just a little bit better with a tiny bit of extra effort. So I messed around with one of her classics, a snacking icon of our household growing up. These so-called firecrackers made out of saltines, garlic powder, crushed red pepper flakes, and canola oil. It takes dry saltines into more of a Dorito territory, and that ranch powder does all the heavy lifting in terms of flavor. I've actually seen a fancy version of this snack from Bon Appetit where they use za'atar, but for what I'm trying to achieve today, the saltines and the ranch powder are the foundation of the recipe. Those, like the Rice Krispies and the marshmallows of the last example, shan't be changed. Instead, let us look to upgrading the oil. Instead of cheap vegetable or canola oil, I will turn to avocado oil. As for the garlic powder, you'll get a more interesting, almost sweet flavor by using the roasted form of powdered garlic. From here, all that's left is the crushed red chili flakes, and this one is easy. There are way more interesting forms of crushed and dried chili peppers. Ever tried gochugaru? It's the Korean chili flake that's used in kimchi that adds a fruity earthiness instead of just spice, that could certainly work. But my favorite dried chili flake to use in this application is the Sweet Heat Blend from Flatiron Pepper Company. Mix the oil, ranch powder, garlic powder, and pepper flakes in a measuring cup. In a giant Ziploc bag or a big rigid container, put all the saltines in at once so that you don't let some soak up all the oil before the others. Add the flavored oil, seal the container, and start gently turning it around for even distribution. This is gonna look super oily, but it just needs a little time. Gently turn that container over every five minutes until it all gets fully soaked into the thirsty saltines. It can take half an hour for that to happen. Afterwards, if you do wish for a warm and toasty experience, you can lay a couple servings onto a sheet pan and bake them at 250 for 15 minutes, but the beauty in this little firecracker is in its chip adjacent crunch that doesn't require any baking. While we're at it, you can't really talk about childhood classics without mentioning pigs in a blanket. And since these are so easy to upgrade conceptually, I'll leave you with a couple of options. First, instead of wrapping them in crescent rolls or biscuit dough, use puff pastry. It'll be much flakier in texture and far superior in taste, especially if you get the kind that's made with real butter. With the blanket upgraded, let's talk pigs. Hot dogs are the classic choice, and the hot dog market has never been more full of bougie choices than it is now. These hot dogs are dry aged and smoked over cherry wood. You could get Wagyu hot dogs, poultry dogs, plant-based wieners for the vegetarians. I'll make three examples today. One with fancy hot dogs, one with chorizo in casings, and one with merguez sausage. These two come pre-cooked, but this chorizo is not. So I'll cook that over medium low heat until it reaches at least 160 internally. Let those cool off all the way, lest your dish be squirted with hot fat. In the meantime, you can get some puff pastry rolled out and sliced into about two by four inch rectangles. Make an egg wash by whisking a whole egg and a tablespoon of water together in a little bowl. This will act as an adhesive and as a browning agent. You just brush the egg wash onto the pastry, 
introduce a two to three inch chunk of cylindrical meat and roll it up thusly so that the egged part of the pastry overlaps onto itself. Repeat the process until every pig has been tucked into its respective blanket and keep them seam side down so that they don't unravel. Brush each one with the egg wash and add a garnish on top that hints at what might be inside. For the merguez, a sprinkle of za'atar. For the chorizo, a thin slice of red jalapeno. And for the hot dog, a special little trick. Mix a half teaspoon of baking soda into the leftover egg wash and brush that on top. The idea is to get the crust extra dark and blistered to mimic a pretzel, and I'll garnish it with a little bit of flaky salt to drive that concept home. Bake these pastry wrapped piggies at 400 degrees until the tops are deeply golden brown. During the bake, you can fix a dipping sauce for whichever version you choose, like maybe for the chorizo pigs you mix a quarter cup of Mexican crema with the juice and zest from half a lime, and a spoonful of adobo sauce from a can of chipotle peppers. For the merguez lambs in a blanket, mix plain Greek yogurt, a minced garlic clove, the juice of half a lemon, and a teaspoon of finely minced cilantro. And for the classic unbothered hot dog, equal parts honey and mustard. Next time I make these, the whole batch will be of the merguez variety. The deep roasted spice notes harmonize with that tangy yogurt sauce beautifully. And surely that's the most artfully anyone has ever spoken of a food this silly with a name this goofy. At the risk of further alienating my non-American viewers, I'm not even gonna talk about how any of these recipes would be perfect to bring to a party for the upcoming Super Bowl. But either way, now you've got a protein, a cracker, and a dessert that all build on a foundation of cheap, easy, processed, classic American childhood faves with a little extra twist. After all, you're never too old to revisit the classics. Why does that music sound so familiar? Let's go. Throw that ass in the circle. Throw that ass in the circle. Fuck your ass in the circle. Throw that ass in the circle. Factor has paid to be mentioned at the end of this video. Factor is a meal prep company for people who watch all of my videos and think to themselves, yeah, that's all well and good, but I still don't wanna cook. They send you meals according to your dietary restrictions or macro goals, and they're ready to warm up in a microwave. It is easier than a meal kit delivery box, healthier than takeout, and more gourmet than relying on whatever is in your freezer section of your grocery store. You can choose between keto, calorie smart, vegan and veggie, protein plus, or you can get what I got, the chef's choice. They sent me a box of meals and I'm gonna eat one right after I'm done shooting this video. This is my real everyday kitchen and there's no way for you to tell on that side of the screen, but it's always a disaster scene just out of frame where I have a rat's nest of cables and a mess of lights back here. With today's factor meal, I can have something to eat in just two minutes while I clean up and tear down. Plus, it'll be infinitely more nutritious than scarfing down all these hot dogs and Rice Krispie treats. Head to factor75.com or click the link below and use code NETSHACK50 to get 50% off your first factor box. That's factor75.com with code NETSHACK50 for 50% off your first factor box. And they have smoothies too.